Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. We have a lot of random things to do to launch Tier 1 Microminers, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. To get to the tank, I'm going to need about 10,000 buckets of deuterium. If I make 4 HV centrifuges, it will take me 347 hours to get that much deuterium. 4 HV centrifuges will use 1 bucket of hydrogen every 2.55 seconds. I have a net positive on methane, and I'm currently making roughly one hydrogen bucket per second, so I should be fine to set up four right now. I'll make a 4K ME fluid storage cell and partition it on deuterium. If you would like to go to space, you can also make and send deuterium rovers in the lunar mining station, which only works on the moon, to get lots and lots of deuterium. I do not want to go to space. The third useful way to get deuterium is using moon dust. You need 100,000 moon dust, and you get one moon dust per moon turf, and you get 64 moon turf per steel plated microminer. Which means if you send 1,562 microminers over the course of your playthrough up to tank, you will get sufficient moon dust for deuterium. You may recall that the only things we were really worried about for basic microminers was the quartzite and the brass. We'll get those from tier 2 and tier 3 microminers. I'll be using both the four HV centrifuges and a large number of tier 1 microminers to create the necessary deuterium. I'm setting up my four tuber centrifuges here with the rest of my main fluid processing. Hydrogen is partitioned on this fluid interface, and it's filling up these centrifuges. I'll set all these to extract always active on purple so that they dump their deuterium into this fluid interface. And now we'll start getting a tiny amount of deuterium, which will eventually build up to a huge amount in 347 hours. We already have the rocket fuel for microverse missions, but we also need quantum flux. There are multiple ways to get this. The best way, given what we currently have, is using extraterrestrial matter and pulsating crystals. Moon dust is only a good idea if you're on the moon when moon dust is in huge supply. If we're only getting it from the tier 1 microminer, like me, we shouldn't use it. This recipe for quantum flux only works at IV, and I don't really see why anyone would use it as it requires pristine enderman matter. After the tank, it might be useful because you can solidify experience from liquid XP, and the created portable tank gives you infinite fluids. But for now, this is our goal. We'll make pulsating crystals, which require diamonds and pulsating iron. Pulsating iron we can get from an ally smelter with pulsating dust and iron ingots. I don't want to take the pulsating dust from my DML system, so instead I'll be smelting it from uraninite dust, and I'll be getting uraninite ore by sending the steel-plated microminer. I only need one pulsating crystal to send my first microminer, so I'm just going to make quantum flux right now. However, we still need to send the microminer which requires a small microverse projector. However, to get that you need a quantum compressor, which requires an elite catalyst. This doesn't seem so bad, right? You need black steel, which you get from steel dust, black bronze dust, which is just copper, silver, and gold, void crystals, which you already have, and red coal, which is coal in a resonator. Luckily for my sanity, I already apparently prepared 64 red coal many episodes ago. I'm going to save myself again and shove them in. Eventually, I'm going to have this run automatically and always, because you need this black steel thing for red steel and blue steel, which are used to make enderium and signalum, which you need so much of. I'm mixing up my black steel now, more than I actually need. I only need to smelt up 21 black steel for the quantum compressor. The rest I'm going to shove into this basic drawer. We'll also need 9 luminescence, which is fairly easy except for the weird requirement of phosphoric acid, which you can only get with either apatite or phosphorus. Both of these require either Omnicoins or the Gemstone Sensor to get ores for. I'm just going to buy a bunch of Appetite because Appetite is super cheap, and it makes tons and tons and tons and tons of Appetite and Phosphor. I'll just shove it into my automatic ore processing system. To make 9 Luminescence, I'm going to need 6,000 Phosphoric Acid. That means I need 2 recipes of 1 Appetite Dust, 5,000 Sulfuric Acid, and 10,000 Water. Unfortunately, you can't fill up 10 empty cells by sticking them all into the fluid terminal at once, which is so sad. I'm going to try something with this steel chest. Nope, you can't just click it out. Oh, and it doesn't work with buckets either, which is a big sad. Luminescence. Let's cut a block of enderpearl into 9 enderpearl plates, 9 elite components, 2 elite catalysts, and a quantum compressor. To make the microverse projector, we'll need about 21 microverse projector casings, which is going to be about 84 microverse ingots. With a steel rotor, iron bars, and electric motors, I can get a microverse projector vent. To make four ineffable glass, I need moonstone, which requires lunar reactive dust, which you can get from lapis and a resonator. One moonstone, and ineffable glass. An HV output bus to hold all those ores. One small microverse projector! I have just discovered how to see the top and bottom. You need to use your right mouse button as opposed to your left mouse button. The left mouse button rotates it one way, the right mouse button moves it around the screen. I'll have my input bus back here, my output bus back here, and my input hatch over here. I'll power it with an HV energy input hatch for now. 
quantum compressor for ineffable glass, which you can pass through, by the way, rather than jump on, and then the microverse projector vent and our final microverse casings, and we should get, yes, our small microverse projector is complete. I've switched this out for an MV input bus for reasons. And now let's send our first micro miner. Oh, right, we need to supply it with rocket fuel. Rocket fuel is now being supplied, and I'm going to extract always active on brown into this fluid input hatch, and then we should see the items disappear, and the microverse projector is running. And we should see in a few moments, yes! The first things I'm going to process are uraninite ore and salt ore. And I'm going to keep one of each in my inventory for reasons. To input into our system, I'm going to place down a steel chest with an export on lime, always active, round robin. For some reason, my robot arm has been reset. I do not know why. I'm doing something terribly silly. It involves a robot arm and a steel chest, which will be set to accept all of the dust I want to electrolyze and it involves a smart item filter, which will filter items based on specific machines' recipes. If we put it into the robotic arm, and if we put more than 23 borax into the steel chest, only 23 borax should be extracted into the electrolyzer. Let's find out. Okay, that's annoying. I think I had to set the robot arm to keep exact- no. Let's try supply exact. Okay, now it's not putting any borax dust into the electrolyzer until it gets a sufficient amount to do so. We'll stick an advanced big item filter on this steel chest so it only receives the items you wanted to. Right now, that'll be borax dust and rock salt. This drawer, in which I plan to store boron and some other dust I want a lot of, I'm going to put a storage upgrade 5 and a void upgrade. I'll slap salt into the storage drawer up here. I'll add boron and salt to the partition. And then I'm going to take down almost all of this setup. I harvested another electrolyzer for my salt setup, so I'll set up a robot arm. So you can't put the robot arm in the opening face of a chest, just like for GT machines, but if we shift-click, put on the robot arm, and then shift-click again, it works perfectly. Now we can put under an electrolyzer, use the iron screwdriver, put in the smart item filter, and set it to supply exact. I'll extract from these electrolyzers on light blue and insert first into a trash can with an advanced big item filter. I'll set the priority to 1 so that items go into it first, but the advanced big item filter will only allow certain items in, such as potassium. This interface will get a big item filter also on light blue, with boron and salt. Now the problem is, salt is not coming from these electrolyzers, it's actually coming from this steel chest, so I think I'm going to switch all of these to yellow. Salt is now leaving this steel chest, and the boron has been emptied from the electrolyzers. And as soon as I put an interface down here and set it to salt and extract it into this mixer, salt will start being used for the only thing I want to use it for, chlorine. Salt will get extracted on purple out of this interface into this mixer, and the electrolyzer will turn the salt into additionally sodium hydroxide, and I'll pull the sodium hydroxide out into the system on cyan. I'll partition the sodium hydroxide into this store that's voiding, even though it's still going to store like 256 stacks of it. Oops. And now salt is being processed into tasty, tasty chlorine. For now, we'll filter stone dust into the trash. Uraninite dust, I'm going to storage bus into this steel chest and have it automatically extract into the multi-smelter at all times. We can see it happening now, and it should be entering the multi-smelter. Pulsating dust is fairly important, so I've given this drawer a storage upgrade. And I'm going to partition thorium and uranium into this storage bus and shove them into the proper drawer this one in particular, and I'll put those into the advanced big item filter. Now why, Jonathan, you asked, do I have all these items in my inventory? Because these are the items I'm going to check to see if they're in my AE system, and if they're not, I'm going to send microminers. The way it works is going to be like this. I want a certain amount of pulsating dust in my system. When there's not enough, I want to send out microminers to get uraninite ore. But while I have the uraninite ore processing and not the pulsating dust, I don't want to send out any more microminers. I mean, I already have the uraninite ore. So, if I have either uraninite ore, or uraninite dust, or sufficient pulsating dust, I will not send out any microminers because of my pulsating dust need. I'll do the same thing for chlorine. If I have sufficient chlorine, or one salt ore, or one salt in my system, I will not send out any microminers. There is one flaw. While the microminers are being sent, there still won't be any ore in the system, so a second set of microminer objects will be put into the input bus and they will inevitably send. Oh well, that's fine. But how am I going to set up this complex system of ands and ors? Integrated dynamics. But that's going to happen in the next episode, which is going to be a standalone for the purpose of teaching the basics of integrated dynamics, as well as using it for this system. I'm trying to decide whether I want to structure it as an integrated dynamics tutorial video, or as an Omnifactory Super Shorts video. 
What I'm thinking is I'm probably going to make two videos and release them at the same time, one that details the basics of integrated dynamics, and one that is an example of integrated dynamics specifically for the purpose of this setup. The integrated dynamics tutorial video will join the playlist with the other new Omnifactory Super Shorts, along with the auto microminer sending video. For now, however, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.